Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome back to the Sick Podcast Recruits Draftcast. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be touching on a tidbit of news coming from the OHL. A high-profile prospect makes his way to the Sudbury Wolves, and we have a guest to come on and talk about that. We're also going to be talking about a little, so a little tidbit of, of news coming from the NHL draft. Now, there might be a change to the format, and I know Grant has some very... Uh, un, 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 I don't know how to say it, but not great thoughts about the format, uh, the potential format there. Um, we're also going to be touching on our usual Habs prospect of the week, sleeper of the week, and prospect of the week. So let's get started. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. Recruits Draft Cast. And with the first overall selection... In the 2023 NHL Draft, the Chicago Blackhawks are very proud to select from the Regina Pats, the Western Hockey League, Connor Bedard. The sickest NHL Draft and Scouting Podcast. It's going to be sick. As always, I am your host, Producer Shane, joined by the magnificent Grant McCagg. Now, Grant, um, we got some tidbit of news this morning um, regarding a prospect by the name of Dalibor Dvorsky, who was drafted by the St. Louis Blues, making his way to the Sudbury Wolves. Now, to talk about that, we bring on Ben Leeson from the Sudbury Stars, who Sudbury Star, who covers the Sudbury Wolves. So, Ben, you broke the story, correct? Well, it was. Uh, I think it was something that was kind of coming across a few desks all at the same time uh, since yeah. the uh, the team over in Sweden announced that. Uh, they were agreeing with St. Louis to terminate the contract this morning, and that kind of got the ball rolling pretty quickly. But uh, it's it's been exciting for you know anyone who's been following it and thinking that the Wolves might have a chance to land a player like Dvorsky. So uh, it was uh, it was exciting, I'm sure, for the league to see that come together too. Yeah, I uh, yeah I, I mentioned last week that w- when somebody had had posted that he wasn't getting much ice time and 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 not playing and hadn't scored any points that 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 they would probably st louis would you know suggest kindly to the team that maybe he should come over to north america but typically that happens after the world juniors you see it a lot quite often and i don't know did you expect it to happen this this quickly I don't know about quite this quickly, but it, it's something I have been keeping an eye on. And I had to think there must be some concerns pretty soon, you know, for, for from the Blues, uh, from from the player and his agent. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe from uh, from his team over there, too, that, uh, you know, just wasn't quite working out the way it hoped. And then when I saw, I think it was uh, he had about a minute 35 in one game and 44 seconds in the other game the other day. I thought something's got to give here pretty quick because, you uh, it just didn't seem like that was something that was uh, that was destined to work out, and um, it's uh, you know it's it's unfortunate because you know you could maybe his his uh, confidence has taken a little bit of a hit now, but hopefully that's something that they get rolling back here pretty quick once he gets in with the wolves and uh, get some chemistry with these other guys. Yeah. Now, obviously, you're closer to the team than Grant and I are. So, can you give us a picture of like how is he going to integrate the team? What kind of role is he going to have? How what what could we expect from Adalibor Dvorsky with the wolves? Well, he's definitely going to be, uh, you know, probably goes without saying he's going to definitely slot into their their top six. Uh, they do have quite a bit of offense there already with guys like David Goyad, Quentin Musty, uh, you know, Coach Adelic, Evan Conyon's a good veteran. So there's going to be some guys that he's probably going to, you know, find it fairly easy to play with pretty quickly. And, you know, he'll be a boost too, I think, in terms of uh, a guy who can drive the play a bit at center, which is uh, something that... Uh, they could probably uh, use a little depth with and and also to help their power play. I don't know if you've noticed, but they're uh, despite the personnel they've got, the uh, Wolves power play is off to a little bit of a slow start. And I think it's a little bit mystifying for everyone involved. So um, you know, a guy like that could only help, I'm sure, when you, you look at the way he's able to create. He, um, he maybe he plays a point on the power play, uh, depending, you know, it's, yeah, um, it's certainly a possibility. Yeah. How is Man- Mania looking on the power play so far this year? Is he the kind of running it, or who's well, the quarterback? There, there's some potential for that to happen. He's actually uh, had a little bit of a late start to the year because he had uh, surgery in the off season. Um, okay, Mania did, yeah. So okay. he could be more into November before he's back, and and that'll obviously be a nice boost. They've been trying out some different guys on the back end, uh, on the point. Uh, 
David Goyette at different times. Um, actually, since they got Jabril Toure back from uh, Ottawa, they've been giving him a bit of a look back there and because he's had some success shooting from the point, things like that. But uh, it's like I say, it's a bit of a work in progress. And I imagine with that personnel, they start to break through after a while, especially after Dvorsky comes in and uh, and gives them a few other uh, things to work with. But, uh, but uh, yeah, that'll be another nice plus when Mania's back for sure. Yeah. Okay. I I should have taken a closer look at the roster. Um, oh, no problem. He he certainly showed potential last year to be. Um, he scored some highlight real goals. Right? Oh, I don't yeah. know. Um, like the the skills there for him mm-hmm. to run a run the power play. Do you think? I, I I think so, and it's certainly a role. I think he'll continue to grow into. Um, you know, as a as a guy who was still fairly young last year and. And, uh, you know, hadn't played in the league that long, but, uh, you know, he sees the ice very well. And, and, and like you say, the skills there for sure, I think he can, uh, he can make some nice plays. So, um, you know how these things go sometimes once they finally find something that clicks, it, uh, it sort of keeps clicking. So, uh, so that, that'll be, uh, it, it'll be nice for them to have some different options for sure. He, um, do, do you foresee, uh, has go yet predominantly played center or, can you see him maybe sliding over to the wing and Dvorsky kind of centering that top line with Goyette? That's that's certainly one of the options I imagine that they'll look at. Uh, last year, what they ended up doing is Goyette, who had mostly played center before, uh, like when he, his his uh, seventeen year old year in the league, it was mostly him between Coach Adelic and Evan Konyan, and they had some good success that way. But uh, last year, you primarily saw him on the right wing with Adelic in the middle and and Musty on the left side, uh, especially as Musty really you know, came into his own uh, in his uh, NHL draft year. And so uh, I could see them trying something like that, maybe with Dvorsky in the middle or, uh, you know, and, and that would maybe allow, uh, you know, Delic to center, uh, you know, another line in the top six. But uh, th- that that's definitely an option for them, I would think, uh, you know, because he's got that, you know, ability. It's, he's, he's a strong two-way player, sort of a play-driving centerman who could, uh, who could fill that role. They've got uh, – so they're going to have three Europeans uh, – with with Dvorsky now, uh, obviously there's going to have to be a, a movement. Uh, what do you what are you thinking that that's likely to happen in that regard? Yeah, it could take a little little while to work out because I know there's some different rules with imports and protected lists and all that. And it can be not the easiest thing to do. Um, I guess you know the 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 it might look like um, you know you have a younger defenseman on the back end in uh, Jakob Kromiak who's certainly shown some some promise and is in this draft year and I got to think there'd be some interest uh, from other teams uh, in a guy like that uh, the assumption is probably that Jakob Vondrish is is pretty safe in the net at this point uh, you know as a 19 year old goalie who the Wolves have sort of tabbed as their starter so that seems like the most likely uh, scenario but uh, I guess we'll have to see how it plays out and it could take a few days uh, before they they're really able to, to sort it out I, I guess that's kind of the other side of this it can be a little bit of a sensitive situation a little bit tough when you got uh, when you got kids involved who have sort of had to travel halfway across the world to make this stuff work but uh, I imagine they'll try to suit it out sort it out in a way that it suits everyone yeah. Chromiak you mentioned uh, his brother played in Kingston so perhaps you know there's a connection there that he you know maybe yeah, K- Kingston looks at grabbing him I, w- I was wondering, there's a bit of history there, yeah, and, you know, a bit of familiarity. I think he had been some, to some games there even before he ever signed with the Wolves, and uh, he's probably been to the city. Plus, I guess there'd be a familiar face on the back end with, uh, you know, Jacob Holmes, former Wolves captain, playing there uh-huh. now as an overager. So, friendly face. Uh, who knows? Uh, it, uh, it it seems like it could be a fit. Fantastic. So now, yeah. with, with the addition of Dvorsky, right, you look at the outlook of the OHL, and we have a show coming up with GM of the Peterborough Pete's Mike Oak. So for everybody watching, stay tuned for that. Um, and so we got a bit of an outlook about the OHL with him, but now can you tell us where the, the wolves you think would situate themselves uh, moving forward? I think they're, you know, pretty widely viewed as a, a team that can potentially contend to win the East this year. They they're four and three so far. They've had a couple showings that were uh, maybe a little bit disappointing, but a couple, you know, where they've looked the games they've won, where they've looked very, very good. And, uh, Awful lot of offense coming back this year. Now more offense with a guy like uh, Dalibor Dvorsky coming in, and uh, their uh, their their blue line is shaping up pretty well. Um, you know now they have you know, obviously, like you pointed out, uh, Mania is going to be part of that group too, and uh, goaltending seems pretty solid. So 
I'd say this is probably the year where, you know, they, well, they've made no secret of the fact they really want to make a push this year, and they seem to have the personnel to do it with potential for a couple additions. Yeah. Quentin Musty was a uh, first overall pick uh, a few years back in the OHL priority draft. Um, maybe didn't quite go as high as considering that he was a first overall pick. Uh, maybe didn't go quite as high as some people maybe expected in the NHL draft. What would you, um, how would you have described his career so far and what maybe uh, would have prevented him from uh, being a top 20 pick at the, in last year's draft? Well, there were, I think that he had some, you know, some, some adjustments to make to playing, uh, playing at, at this level. Uh, you know, that's something that uh, maybe, um, you know, folks forget sometimes is just, you know, how tough that can be, especially for a kid who's sort of, you know, like him, who's got, uh, got the skill he has and the size he does. And, the, you know, like, you know, maybe things that didn't, you know, go as easy for him right away. And I think he did respond very well to uh, the coaching change under uh, Derek McKenzie. He seemed to respond well to that, improved his two-way play. Um, you know, he's never been the most, uh, explosive skater he does a good job when he's get, gets going but uh that's one thing i think we we've seen some real improvement in this year from him though is that speed and skating so that's something that should should help him a lot and uh you know last year too he did start the uh, he did start the year with a bit of an illness and i think that contributed to a bit of a slow start too so you know maybe yeah. a lot of that in some of those early viewings did did knock him a little bit um certainly has certainly did did finish really strong and uh you know i think uh I think we'll probably, um, you know, probably see him have a pretty strong year, especially once he kind of gets his, you know, his groove going, being back from the Sharks camp and all that. But, uh, yeah. you know, certainly a lot, a lot of upside there, maybe maybe as much as, as most guys in that first round, um, you know, but, uh, you know, we'll see if he can uh, he can really kind of put that together going forward. He, um, I noticed on a couple of times last year, and I mean, it's something that scouts, it bothers scouts when they see it is maybe pulling up uh, to prevent being hit a couple of times. And you just wonder if, uh, have you seen a more, maybe him playing a, a little more robust style so far this, this year and that he can maybe improve as he gets stronger. I mean, you know, you draft eligible kid, right? Mm -hmm. You're still young. You still got some filling out to do. So maybe in that regard, do you, have you seen uh maybe a little more of a uh, a rugged style to his game so far this year? Yeah, I, I think we've probably started to see a little more of that you know, physical assertiveness even as the, like, later in the year last year. But, right. uh, but yeah, he's, uh, I, I imagine, I mean, it's, it's only been a couple games back now, but, uh, but uh, you know, I, I, he seems to be going, uh, you know, pretty well into traffic. And I, I think we'll probably see that more and more, you know, being an 18 year old player now and, you know, an NHL drafted player in the, in this league, uh, he, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things I think that's maybe, uh, you maybe takes a little while for, uh, you know, for, for guys to really sort of embrace the fact that they're big men out there. And he is, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a big, strong kid. So, uh, you know, you, you, hopefully he'll, uh, he'll embrace that as much as possible. Cause he really is that, you know, does have potential to be that power forward type. Right. Nathan Villeneuve is someone who, uh, NHL scouts really, uh, really like, yeah. He is a robot. Like he plays big for his size. Um, good skater. There's a lot of things to like about him. What are what do you see? What do you see in his game? And are are you hearing any buzz on on where maybe scouts uh, have him slotted at this point? I know it's early. I w I wouldn't be quite sure where where NHL guys have him slotted, but I imagine there's definitely some uh, you know some interest in him as a as a pro style player. I mean, it's in interesting. You talk about guys playing that robust game, and you know Nathan Villeneuve is probably one of the few 16 year olds I've seen who didn't really play like a 16 year old from the time he got into the OHL. Like he's he was just kind of. I think he might. I think he fought in preseason last year, if I remember right. Um, you know, just just one of those guys who just just wasn't scared. You know, almost coming to sometimes maybe uh, maybe almost a little uh, little uh, too boisterous, uh, but, uh, but 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 really, you know, really plays the game hard, goes into traffic hard, and and has a physical style for sure. Isn't isn't scared, and I know that's going to earn him a lot of uh, you know a lot of love at the next level, and uh, and I think like like others have pointed out, you know, there hasn't been a, a ton of points yet, but there's definitely some skill there, and 
if he uh, if he had some production to that that high high work rate we've seen with him, you know, I could see that taking him pretty far. Are there any other draft eligible guys on on the Wolves this year that uh, that you think might um, might come to the fore before the end of the season? Uh, there's a couple guys for sure. I mean, I think one who, uh, scouts have probably been a little bit split on even, you know, at the OHL level before is a guy like Kieran Walton. I mean, he's a big, big forward, uh, can play center of the wing. Um, and, and I know there was some concern, I think in the past about his physical consistency, especially with a guy with such a big frame, uh, who does have nice speed and a nice skill set. And I think we've saw some really promising things for him early. He's, he's put up a few points, uh, He's he's going more readily into into traffic into corners than I think you you saw him do last year and uh, like I say seems to be um, embracing the fact that he's he's got a big frame and he's he's a pretty big strong guy out there and I could see a kid like him with his his physical tools really uh, you know really rising uh, if he continues to to play well and a uh, guy that's probably off the radar a little bit but I think has been pretty promising so far as a first year player in the league is a is a defenseman uh, Owen Protz who's come in played uh, for the Ottawa Junior Senators in the CCHL last year and, and ended up getting a lot of minutes with them as a, as a young kid went all the way to the Centennial Cup and uh, has just come in and played a very composed very solid game uh, he's obviously quite strong seems to make good decisions and keep a keep a good gap and all that stuff you look for in a young D who's trying to find his way at this level. So be interesting to see how he builds on that going forward too. Well, that's great stuff. I don't know if you got anything uh, else to ask him there, Shane, but uh, All good for me. I, I really appreciate you coming on Ben and uh, getting that scoop today. Yeah. Oh, Hey, no, no problem. I appreciate you having me on. It's, it's always fun to talk about and we'll, uh, we'll look forward to, uh, to, to following this going forward too. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. All right. So that was Ben Leeson from the Sudbury Star talking to us about Dalbor Dvorsky leaving Sweden, going to the OHL with the Sudbury Wolves. Uh, obviously, zero points in 10 games. You knew something was bound to give and he makes his way to the OHL. So Blues fans should be pretty happy about this news. Um, so looking forward I'm pretty to seeing, happy. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing what what Mr. Dvorsky can can do over in Sudbury. Now, I, uh, I'm, Grant, pre yes? just, I'm pretty happy about the move. I uh, I had him ranked third overall last year. He was my pet guy. I was stubborn about it. And now at the start of the year, he uh, ten games, no points. I looked like uh, looked like I don't know have a clue what I'm doing there when it comes yeah. to scouting. You also have so, to look at the time he played, right? Like, well, yeah. Nice, so. And I mean that it's that it was in the uh, Swedish Hockey League, right? Yeah. Um, like it's funny. You know, uh, people will, will see, well, he wasn't playing there, uh, da, da, da. But he could go in the OHL and score two points a game, and then and they'll say, oh, he's a star, right? He, he didn't change. He's the same player, but yeah. it, it's just circumstance uh, opportunity is so important, especially after you were drafted. Um, I mean, it's a big step up for an 18-year-old kid. And he's a late 18-year-old, too. Like, he just turned 18 in the summer, so he's still yeah. just a kid you know, and uh, to ask him to play in the, in the Swedish hockey league, typically the coaches are conservative and they don't play the kids. So um, a little surprised that he didn't get more opportunity because he's such a responsible two-way player that I, I mean, I said before the coaches love him, but evidently he found a coach who didn't love him at, at least at this point in, in his career. So uh, guaranteed he'll go to Sudbury the coach there will love him. He plays a North American style. Um, he uh, he'll play and and be great at the World Juniors again, like he was last year, I'm sure. And I think this is the best move for him: get acclimated to the North American game sooner, uh, get lots of ice time, and keep developing. Because I think I think he's going to be a heck of a pro. Yeah, and and you know he he did go top 10, right? He went 10th overall <laughs> to the blues. So uh, right. the talent is there, the potential is there, uh, and he's going to get plenty of opportunities in Sudbury. Uh, so we, we love seeing prospects thrive and in situations like he was in, in Sweden, it's not, you know, it's not conducent to thriving to, to being well-developed. So uh, we're, we're, we're happy here to see him going to Sudbury. Now uh, there is a rumor, a speculation going around that, the NHL draft could change formats to follow along what the NFL and the NBA are doing, which are basically the, the teams would be staying home. 
So instead of having, you know, the floor filled with tables and all the teams, you know, taking calls and going to see each other and all that, the teams would actually stay home and it would be the commissioner that gets a call. All right, this, you know, St. Louis is taking this guy. All right. And then he announces the pick as do the NFL and the NBA. Um, I personally hate that. And I think you have some very strong feelings about that possibility as well. So I'll let you delve into it. Yeah, I'd say I hate it as well. I think we're, <laughs> I think, uh, safe to say that that, you know, we, we both agree on that. Um, I don't know. Is, is Bettman a sadomasochist? Like, does he want to get booed every pick? He want, you know, like uh, Roger he Goodell. I like it. Every time he goes on stage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, maybe that's what makes him tick. I don't know. But I mean, you see it with Goodell to a certain degree, but yeah, he gets booed even worse than Goodell in NFL. So it'd be just, you know, a cacophony of booze every pick. Like, I don't want Gary Bettman announcing every pick. I don't want him. I don't even want him on the stage, let alone being there through the whole draft. And I mean, why, why do they have to be, you know, I, I got comments from uh, some NHL scouts. I, I mentioned it to him there and here's one like said, Oh my God, awful. We have a unique draft and it works. Why yeah. change? Pathetic. I mean, that, that wraps it up. That's exactly what I feel, you know. What's next? Do they uh, stop the handshakes uh, after a series because they don't do it in the NBA and the NFL? Are they going to stop? Are they going to hand, start handing the cup to the team owner because that's what they do in baseball and everything else? Like, why do we have to copy other leagues when we're doing it right? Yeah. You know, be unique. Be uh, Don't copy other leagues because it's not – how is it better? Like I had one guy saying, oh, well, it puts more focus on the the kids. Well, I mean, when Bob McKenzie's, uh, when, when they're up on stage and they're shaking hands and that, Bob McKenzie isn't talking about, oh, GM, this and that. He, yeah. He's talking, he's describing the, the prospect. It's not going to change. How would it change in any way? They get all of the, for the five minutes in between each pick, the, the, the analysts are talking about that prospect. They're not talking about the scouts up on stage or, mm -hmm. or this or that. They're, it's I don't see how it would change, like it put more focus on the player. Um, none of the scouts, I had two or three scouts, and then none of them liked the idea. They get stupid it's an, it was another comment I got. And uh, I don't know, it just, you get all of the scouts to put in all the work that year they go to the draft. Like one guy said, I, you know, from a personal standpoint, I love to go to each draft, you know? Yeah. Um, meet the player. Meet the guy that you hope is going to help you win a cup someday. Shake his hand. Talk to him, you know? You, make it personal. You did all the work. You vouched for this guy, and then you can't, you can't even meet him and shake his hand at the draft because you want to copy what the NFL and the NBA is doing. I just think it's a ludicrous idea, and I don't think NHL GMs are gonna. I don't. I don't see them. You know, they've made some stupid rule changes, like the you know the stupid offside rules that they have. That you know, there's been some stupid decisions, as far as I'm concerned, made by NHL GMs in the past. But a lot of them are were scouts at one point, even if they're not now, and that they appreciate that this is. You know, it's not just for the players, it's for the scouts too. And for the, you know, all the hard work that they put in, invite them to the draft, let them have their day or two days and uh, just keep, it isn't broke, so don't fix it. Literally. I mean, it, it, to me, it is the best formula for a draft. All the teams are there, right? And and the most, one of the most exciting parts of a draft are trades. Trades. Like you look back at, at the draft in Montreal, right? Like two trades before the fourth pick is in. That was electric. I was there. It was brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic yeah. experience. So, um, and, and then you put yourself in the shoes of, of the players as well, right? You, you, you go on stage, you get to shake the hand of the coach, the GM, the, the scouts, all that. Instead, yeah. you go to shake the hand of Bettman. Come on, you know, that, yeah. that kind of ruins the moment.
You know what I mean? Uh, there's well, nothing good that would come out of this change. And just because of that, I'm sure the NHL is going to do it because they're so out of touch, so out of touch. They, well, they, they see that the NBA and the NFL are succeeding. They're, they're thriving leagues and they are. But this is not something you want to emulate from them. No. All right? There's plenty of other things that they're doing better than the NHL. The draft is not one of them. Exactly. The NFL draft is the most exciting out of all the major sports by oh, far. Oh, easily. And, I mean, the, you know, the speculation. Like, you see uh, GM on the phone. They, they get the camera. and Oh, he's talking to that guy, you know. Yeah. If, if it's done remotely, you're not going to know that. You're not going to know when one GM's talking to the other, or they they walk up and they talk. They have a little, they have a little powwow on the draft That's floor. That's all exciting, you know. Oh, uh, you know, when Brian Burke uh, was trying to get the Sedin twins, yeah. <laughs> well, we knew something was up because he's sitting, he's talking to Brian. You know, he's doing this, doing that, or when they were trying to trade up to get Kadri and ended up getting them anyway. You know, you saw the clips later that uh that, that the nhl network put out of the draft with burke saying you know you want to trade up to get cadre and brian kind of looking at him and sort of nodded his head just to just to please him uh, yeah that's yeah that's why we want to trade up brian uh, is to get cadre uh which, which ended up actually being a good pick but i don't yeah. think that that was what ottawa wanted to do <laughs> at the draft was to pick cadre but he just you know he knew that uh, Burke had the, had the mic on, and that he, sure, that's yeah, that's that's the guy we want. Uh, but <laughs> it just, uh, yeah, it's not broke. Don't fix it. I think this will get. I really hope this gets struck down at the GM meetings, yeah. and that they they don't uh, they don't even consider it. Fingers crossed, because that would be a real real shame. Um, but anyways, let's cleanse our palate here. Let's go to something a little bit more positive. Uh, let's look at our Habs prospect of the week, that being Joshua Roy. Josh is, uh, um, he's a terrific uh, um, prospect, and he um, he scored uh, he scored two beautiful goals he did. in his first two games. Um, I may have sent the wrong clip; it could be on me there too. So you know, it wouldn't be the first time that uh, that that's happened. But um, he. he um, it, it, as we saw, uh, I mean, I posted it on Twitter. Uh, the the goal that he scored, his very first pro goal, was just you know he made that deke at the blue line and, and suck, sucked in the uh, the defenseman or sorry the forward, and then beat the goalie. And then his second one, oh my goodness, it was a perfect shot uh, off the post in in the slot on the power play. Um, he keeps uh, he keeps um, scoring goals like that uh, on the power play in Laval. You're gonna there's gonna be a call up soon enough, and he'll be uh, he'll be on that first power play because the Canadians yeah. look like once again that they're uh, they're not uh, gonna be uh, great on the power <laughs> play. So. Yeah, that's an understatement. Um... No, that's it. I, I was going to mention how he's probably very, very high on the call-up list. Uh, and with the Habs, you know, track record with injuries, we'll likely see him fairly soon. Hopefully not. Uh, but if we do, then good for him and good for us because we want to see Joshua well some more. He is electric and he is ready for the pro. Um, all right. Sleeper of the week. We have Mr. Philip Sitar. Let's look at some video from him. He is uh, he is an exciting prospect. Mm -hmm. He um, another kid playing in Malmo, another Slovenian. Easier to pronounce his name though. Yeah, that one's pretty good. You know, I like it. This uh, C tire makes sweet sweet music out there. Put it you can put it that way. Um, he's uh, he's got great hands. He's He's a kid that wasn't drafted last year. So a uh, little under the radar. That's why I kind of have him as a sleeper pick mm -hmm. this year. But uh, just has terrific skills, as you can see on these highlights. Um, it, it, it's a fairly long clip because I 
I took every goal and assist that he has so far this year, uh, every primary assist and goal. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, he's leading the Sw Swedish juniors in scoring. 27 points in 14 games. Jeez. Um, quite impressive. Now, you you see in these clips why. Yeah. The kid's got a great shot, good wheels, really good hands. Uh, he's, I think what is most exciting about him, though, is his playmaking. Um, sees the ice terrifically. You just see a bunch of terrific passes that he makes in this uh, – um, and especially on the power play, um, I, I mean, you don't, it just, it's exciting how many over age or undrafted players are stepping up this year in Europe. Like we had Palkin in, you know, um, we had others that, that I've, uh, that I've identified and we've featured on here in previous episodes and, uh, I, you know, I kept seeing this guy up oh, because I'm checking the box scores all the time. C tire, C tire, C tire. Um, I just said, okay, I got to look at him, even though he went undrafted last year. But sometimes these kids, especially in Europe, take an extra year to blossom. You know, they get the opportunity. There's another. I mean, <laughs> uh, oh, here, yeah, here he is on the on the shootout too. Wow, uh, the kids. Sniper, playmaker, skater, stick handler. I mean, when you you check off boxes for somebody as far as offensive upside goes, uh, you see all of that with this kid. So uh, NHL scouts have said to me on more than one occasion, you know, how much does age matter? Well, it doesn't matter that much if they're a little older, if, they, if they're good, if they can play. Yeah. If it's a year later, immaterial. Like if uh, you know they ke he keeps playing like this, he leads the uh, Swedish juniors in scoring. He like he's a he's got more points than a lot of kids that were drafted in the top four rounds last year that are playing Swedish junior this year. So that's all you got to you know. That's all you got to know. Yeah. Like if he's out playing guys that were picked in the third round, fourth round, second round last year that are still playing junior and there's lots of them. Well, you know, surely he, for sure he's going to get drafted this year. And if he keeps up and keeps uh, playing like that and making plays that I, that I saw every game that I scouted, he'll be, uh, maybe he even goes in the top three rounds like Polkanen. Wow. There, there could be several guys as it's shaping up that, uh, that get picked in the top three rounds that were undrafted last year. And that only adds to the depth of the draft. And that, that makes it exciting for me. Yeah, I bet. I bet. But it also gives you more work. Um, but sure. <laughs> it's good. For too much work. Yeah. That's it. It's good for the show. We got more sleepers. So <laughs> Philip Sitar is someone to have on your radar. If you haven't already uh, yeah. now prospect of the week is Mr. Luke Misa. Let's look at some footage. Yeah. We actually got a, CHL or in there here, uh, he uh, it, he's impressed me right from. He had a really good, really strong preseason, and you just, <clears throat> <clears throat> I mean, he's only five ten, and of course, scouts are always a little leery on the five ten guy because how does it translate? Mm -hmm. Well, his speed translates. He's uh, one of the fastest skaters in this draft, and uh, great skills. He can shoot the puck. Very good playmaker. What I like though is that he drives the play. He um, uh, a lot of these highlights are him making plays uh, without utilizing his speed. But it, when you watch him in a game and watch his shifts, he's creating uh, chances constantly with his speed. Now most of these are power play type things uh, where he's a little more stationary. So you don't necessarily see the speed, but that's good too. I mean, it shows that he, you know, that he can score uh, in a lot of different ways, not just by using his speed, but his smarts and his vision are very good too. And he's got a good shot. Like you, yeah. can, you see on these, uh, like that one, you, you, you don't even see the, the shot basically. It was uh, right in the corner. 
So uh, constantly creating havoc with his speed. Um, he's leading the OHA and OHL in scoring. Uh, and it's his draft year. So much like Sitar, if, if that keeps up with him uh, and he ends up being the, uh, you know, top 10 scorer in the OHL, scouts can't dismiss that. Um, I don't think too many of them consider him or at least didn't consider him to be a second round guy, but I'm, uh, I, I've got him moved up into the second round uh, um, of the draft. And um, if he keeps, if he keeps producing like he is and creating havoc and playing, I, I think he plays very competitively for his size. Mm -hmm. uh, could well see him go somewhere late late in the second round uh, of the draft and maybe even higher if he keeps producing like he does. I know some NHL scouts like him, some don't. It always gets back to the size part of it. A lot of them, uh, you got to keep proving it over and over. They have to see a, a, a smaller guy prove it several yeah. times before they come on board. And uh, I know there's there, there are some guys that, that are still leery about him being able to translate it to the NHL level, but uh, he keeps playing like that. He had, um, I think he had five, or he had eight points in two games on the weekend. So uh, you, you can't dismiss that. So he gets the nod as uh, as the prospect of the week, and it's nice to get a nice to have junior hockey back, and yes. uh, we we start to get get some plaudits out to some of these uh, Canadian kids. That's it. Tija Ginla last week and uh, Luke Misa this this week. Who knows about next week? You'll just have to tune in. So don't forget to subscribe to the Sick Podcast, Recruits Draftcast. Like and comment. Tell the algorithm that you like us. That's always appreciated. And don't forget to go check out recruits.ca. There is something for everyone, whether you're a Habs fan or just a, a hockey fan looking to get some information about the upcoming draft. Grant does some fantastic work on there, and you can get it for dirt cheap. So go check that out. As always, Grant, thank you for jumping on with me. Thank you to Ben Leeson as well for taking the time to talk with us. And we will see you all next week. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast Recruits Draftcast on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.